Hi, I'm James Amon, fellow at the Bedeen Center for Rural Economic Development at the University of Minnesota Brookston. Today, we're going to give you an update on the current landscape of vertical farming. If you recall, several years ago, we did uh, an episode on this, but it's important over three years to talk about some of the technological advancements, as well as the trends associated with vertical farming. Uh, globally, vertical farming continues to grow in popularity. Uh, there's significant traction as well as government and private sector investment that continue to perpetuate and accelerate the growth of vertical farming. In addition, recent studies have shown that some vertical farming methods, depending on the crop and where it's located, can actually reduce water usage by up to 98%, which is remarkable given some of the water challenges we're experiencing, not only throughout the United States, but globally. Market growth, uh, th there's been a steady expansion globally and it's expected to continue this trajectory, especially as we have issues feeding the world. Um, and what we're now finding is uh, some of these operations are in fact becoming commercially viable. Some of the operations in the West have struggled for commercial viability and required government assistance to kind of get the, the process moving and hopefully realize the economies of scale. But there are parts of the world, especially the Middle East, uh, exemplified by Saudi Arabia, where greenhouse and vertical farming operations are highly profitable and offer major margins. In addition, uh, we're starting to see a rapid sort of standardization of the processes, uh, whether it's uh, grow operations, and then what we're seeing is actually a trend towards smaller operations, which goes against sort of the economic principles of economies of scale and scope, but that seems to be where they're finding the sweet spot in terms of not only production of agriculture, but also profitability. So let's talk a little bit about the evolving landscape of vertical farming. Uh, this was a movement that started in the urban United States to repurpose space. Ironically, as we see drastic reductions in commercial space usage, especially in major cities like San Francisco, New York, and others, where you have 20% occupancy, repurposing this space and transforming these facilities into vertical farms not only feeds people, and, and offers the benefits as mentioned before, but also produces some sort of utilization for that commercial space that's currently empty. In addition, we're starting to see major market opportunities uh, that haven't necessarily opened in the past, uh, that transition or rather that have a segue into local farmers markets and, and other food deserts. Um, vertical farming naturally offers a sustainable solution because you have more control over energy usage as well as water usage. It also contributes to the reduction of hunger. Uh, it seems as though the United States and Australia are leading the charge toward right-sizing operations. As I mentioned uh, before, we were supersizing them because we thought we'd realize many economic benefits, but what we're finding from an energy and water usage, as well as cost perspective, we're trying to find that sweet balance for right-sizing. Uh, and Australia is an amazing example of where we're starting to see some of this data being produced. And then as we learn from past mistakes, we can address previous challenges and hopefully foster sustainable growth so that one, we can feed people and two, we can reduce our footprint on the planet. Thank you for joining me this week and we'll see you next time.